Twenty twenty, we all say goodbye. Twenty twenty one, hello. Good morning, Swim World, and welcome to the No Dunks Podcast on the Athletic Network. It's Thursday, December 31st. Happy New Year's Eve. I'm Jay Skeets, and alongside me, as always, all year long, Tass Mellis. Hey, everybody. Hey, Tassie. We got the bass master ripping them lips, Trey Kirby. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. The international man of mystery taking it to the max, Lee Ellis. Friends. And last but not least, making the magic happen all year long, it's JD. Hello. There he is, and here we are. This is our 298th podcast of the calendar year. Huh. Incredible stuff. Classics through and through. Shout out to the stream team. Make sure you all like and comment and subscribe. Do what you got to do. Email us your questions and your comments to no dunks at theathletic.com. Come 2021, we'll be stepping on the beach once again. So get your cues in and go grab yourself some no dunks merchandise at no dunks.com. All right. Let's make it a classic here to end 2020. Let's do this in style. We've got some uh, good wedgie news a little bit later. We got tweet of the night, but let's start with a little is this news? Yeah, I'm going to throw some headlines at you guys, and we're going to debate whether or not they're newsworthy. And the first one is Jalen Brown matches Larry Bird. Lee, remember that guy? Streaky shooter. <laughs> Larry Bird with 42 points in 29 minutes. Trey, get us started. Is this news? Oh, this is news if you're in the Jalen Brown fan club, and I am because what a game from JB. Bringing to mind another JB. I think Jalen Brown is the next Jimmy Butler, and just seeing the way he has exploded out of the gate for the Celtics this season, if you're a Beantown boy like me, you got to be loving it. 42 last night, and he just looks like he is completely seizing the opportunity with Kemba Walker out. You know, since he's came into the league, Jalen Brown has played with a high usage point guard basically his entire career. It was Isaiah Thomas. It was Kyrie Irving. It was Kemba Walker. But now there's a little bit more space for uh, Jalen to get to work out there. He's skilled enough. He's strong. He's athletic. And just like Jimmy, he's got that desire to be great, to expand his game. Jimmy made an all-star team the first time, his fourth season, age 25. Jalen Brown now... Year five already. He's only 24, but they feel like they're on the same path. They just keep getting better and better and better. You see Jalen getting to work in the mid-range game. His playmaking's coming along a little bit. I don't think they're exactly identical players, but the fact uh, that they can they can dominate at the wing position using their athleticism and their strength, I think, is just so huge. It's been so fun to watch Jalen Brown early this season. Kemba Walker's going to come back, and it's going to be on him to figure out how to fit alongside. Tatum and Brown because both those guys deserve to have the ball all the time. Jalen has been incredible to start the season. He's better than Larry Bird. You said it right there, Ski. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's like, in the Hall of Fame now. Yeah, like through five games, I think it is. I saw at Brian T. Rob tweeting this: twenty-eight points per game for Jalen Brown, fifty-six percent from the floor, forty-four percent from three, and a very respectable six point two free throw attempts per game. So he's doing it everywhere Lily. i thought last night against the grizzlies i mean you know grizzlies missing a lot of guys uh but the celtics took care of business but he was stepping into like pull up threes in transition like he did that like three or four times in this game um he's he's special and it brings me to the question for you lee because we've been sort of throwing it around would you trade for James Harden, if you're the Celtics, Tass, you talked about it. Now, you would say, yeah, let's try and trade Kemba. But let's say the Rockets are like, sorry, man, we don't want Kemba. We already have an injured point guard in John Wall. We want Jalen Brown. Would you trade Jalen Brown and, let's say, Marcus Smart for James Harden if you're Danny Ainge in the Celtics league? I wouldn't do it right now. No, I, I think Jalen Brown is really starting to show uh, the potential that he's, he's he's shown over these last couple of years and it's starting to come to fruition now because he's a two-way player. Mm-hmm. He definitely could be in the running for an all-defensive nod this season. And the Celtics' identity is to work on both ends of the floor and to give up Smart and Jalen Brown. That's two of their critical defensive pieces. And on the offensive end, Marcus Smart, he's a little bit hot and cold, but he does contribute. But what you're seeing, I think, here from Jalen Brown is that, you know, all-star nomination absolutely is in play right now. He's the most improved candidate as well. I mean, again, it's a very small sample size, 
but he's really showing all the hard work that he's put in because he hasn't been a super reliable or consistent shooter throughout his career, but it's starting to come together because he's realizing now how to get to his spots and how to find the right place to, to be in to shoot the ball well. The only thing oddly about him is he's not a great free throw shooter. He's only shooting 67% this season, which is right at his career mark. You'd think that would sort of uh, creep up a little bit over the years, but it hasn't. But anyway, that's a minor, minor uh, uh, tweak there for his game that he needs to improve. But I, I just I just feel where the Celtics are, that with with Brown and Smart going forward, I mean, clearly James Harden, a, you know, a, a fantastic offensive player and would uh, be, a, uh, you know, would, would he improve the team? I mean... Yes and no. I mean, I think what he gives you offensively, they would certainly miss defensively, and that's really what the Celtics like to hang their hat on is to be mm-hmm. that uh, rock-solid defensive team. So I think right now I, I don't think the Celtics would give up Jalen Brown. I, I think Marcus Smart they would if, if it was to involve Ke- Kemba Walker, but I think Tatum and Brown are, are virtually untouchable for the Celtics uh, at, at this moment. Things could always change, of course, but I don't think Danny Ainge pulls a trigger if, he has, if it costs him one of those two young stars. <sighs> If it costs him one of those two young stars, wow. I, I definitely think James Harden would be uh, be high on the priority list. I know Jalen Brown is playing out of his head right now, and, and uh, it, it would be hard to give him up, no doubt. Uh, J- Jalen Brown talks an incredible game uh, coming up to the postseason he, every time, and he just hasn't been able to do it in the postseason. I can't wait uh, until this postseason because it seems like he is growing every single year. Uh, he is an absolute monster this year. And I, I like how they played defense last night, how they just destroyed uh, the Grizzlies in the first quarter. Uh, they absolutely were all up in Memphis and turned them over, over and over again. 22 turnovers for the Grizzlies. I think they had like eight steals in the first quarter, uh, as Kelly Dwyer pointed out. Uh, that's Celtics basketball. So, yeah, they needed that win. It's Although Jalen Brown has been really good, the Celtics haven't been overwhelmingly good. Uh, to start this season, uh, mm-hmm. they they basically beat uh, you know, the Bucks on on a, a bank three, and then they came back and beat the Pacers. And this was their their most emphatic win. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and yeah, it, it's a it's a bad Grizzlies team, so sh- they should do that. And that's how they uh, they won this game. Um, yeah, I think uh, as far as James Harden goes, the Celtics keep striking out on superstars. Every single season, it, it's, it's a, there's a lot of talk about going to get a superstar. It'd be hard to give up Jalen Brown, uh, but uh, but I think there is there's a lot of desire on Danny Ainge's part to get something done. In my opinion, uh, they're they're definitely looking at it anyway. Yeah, about the Celtics' sort of weird start. Jared Vice at the Athletic wrote, I thought something that was spot on. Maybe in a it, it really touched home as a Raptors fan because he wrote the first week of the season has been all over the place for the Celtics but at least Tatum and Brown have made them comfortable that the future is locked in place. 100% true, and I, and I bring that up as a Raps fan because you can't say the same for the Raps right now with them struggling, uh, not getting a victory, but they're sort of two guys that you look at potential building blocks or, or stars for them in Siakam and Van Vliet. Well, they haven't been all that great, right? Uh, where Tatum and Brown are it's special, special players. And you say, yeah, go get the superstar, but the question is, well, is Brown a superstar? I mean, is he going to be like? Do we consider Jimmy Brown, Jimmy Butler, a superstar? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think some people do, some people don't. But if if I'm with you, Trey, if he's on that trajectory, it looks sort of like that. You could be that two way player. Well, then, are you possibly just giving up a superstar for another superstar who's older and Harden, who's obviously uh, limited maybe on one side of the floor uh, a, a lot more than uh, than Jalen Brown is defensively? I don't know. I, I'm torn on this one. Because and I'm here to I'm just here to your take, Trey, because you're obviously a huge Harden fan. You've made it clear you're in the gym. Uh, the the um, you've got me screwed Jaylen up Brown. now. Now I'm going to call him Jimmy <laughs> Brown because you made this comparison. You're in the Jalen Brown <laughs> fan club. Would you make that deal if you're Danny Ainge and the Celtics? Let's say it's Brown and Smart and whatever else to make it happen for Harden. Would you do it? I can't believe it, Skeets. I think you found the first guy I wouldn't trade for James Harden. Wow. Even I can't believe I'm saying it out loud right now. I just kind of feel like the Celtics. They're not one piece away. They're not a James Harden away. If you take a, if you traded Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart, Jason Tatum and Marcus Smart, whatever it is, one of those two and another guy, that's a really, really thin team because we're already yeah. talking about Javante Green playing major minutes for the Celtics. He had a nice game uh, a couple of nights ago against the Pacers. I was like, who is this guy, number 43, playing for the Celtics Green? Is he just a made-up player? There was no way I was going to look it up until after the game. Javante Green But if you're asking for Javante Green to suddenly become a starter, I think that's going to be tough. To me right now, Tatum and Brown will be – I mean, they're already knocking on the door of superstardom right now. Tatum Mm -hmm. for sure. Jalen Brown is making his case right now. 
this is not the year that the Celtics are going to win the championship, even if they were to add James Harden, I don't think. But three years from now, if Tatum and Brown are your two best players, you're looking at the new Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, which we've all dunked on a lot of times after the 3-1 lead. But still, if you can have two star wings in today's NBA when there's not a lot of great wings out there, I don't know if you want to make a move like that. Mm. Well, let's hear from you guys out there in the stream team and listening to the podcasts. Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart for James Harden. Would you do it? No way. Um, you know, obviously from the Celtics side of things, I think the Rockets would be ecstatic with that oh, type of return. Yeah. I mean, it's similar to like, well, that's a whole other question. Would you rather have Ben Simmons or Jalen Brown if you were the Houston Rockets? Um, it's interesting as well. So let's hear, let's hear your take on that hypothetical. Uh, but he was amazing. He was so good last night, Jalen Brown, that Brian Scalabrini on the call just kept saying, geez. <laughs> he dropped like three G's in the game because he can't three believe what he's doing. Um, again, especially those like pull-up in transition threes. We're like, whoa, okay, you added that to the game. That's uh, That's dangerous. All right, our next one here, fun headline. Spurs Becky Hammond, first woman to direct an NBA team. Yeah, she made history Wednesday tasks. First woman to act as head coach during an NBA regular season game uh, after Pop got tossed. Uh, she took over. She's an assistant coach, of course, with the Spurs. She took over in the Spurs' eventual loss to the Lakers, 121-107. Is this news? Becky, first woman to direct an NBA team. No, it's not news. It, 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 until somebody gives a woman a head coaching position, where she is the leader of the team, this won't be news. A woman needs to be given that title and not just this title of directed an NBA team for a half <laughs> while their uh, the head coach was uh, given the ax. Somebody needs to give the proper due to somebody who obviously, in Becky Hammond's case, deserves it. it. The same headline happened during Summer League where she was the Summer League head coach, first woman to direct a Summer League head coach in July in Las Vegas in the blazing heat. Who cares? Somebody needs to give uh, somebody this the title. And it's probably Becky Hammond along the way. I'm not sure if it's going to happen in San Antonio. Uh, it's It sure seems like she is going to be the one. Uh, but we need more women making decisions in our lives, just like when the VP is heading the Senate very soon, hopefully. Uh, there, This this isn't a, a headline to me. I, I don't know if you guys are tired of, of reading this directed a team and was an assistant coach and, and kind of jumped over to the, the head coach's seat for three quarters. I, I think I'm, I'm tired of it. Somebody just needs to uh, to give the head coaching position. I'm not I'm not into these directing headlines. I, when did when did when did anybody ever uh, direct a team? Anyways, what does what does that mean? Give somebody give somebody, give somebody the head coaching yeah. title. Yeah, is she a conductor for a half? Cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. Run, it, yeah. run, give her, give her. Why why is it even a question here in 2020 that a woman has have gotten a head? Coach? We've seen it. Um, it, it, obviously, in the WNBA, we've seen it in the actually in the big three where men are being coached by women and are extremely happy to, with with the job that they're doing. I mean, I don't I don't see it, this as a, a story at all. Well, I think what's interesting wasn't there a game in like 2019 where Pop got ejected? Right, Hammond's on the staff, of course, at the time she's been there for a long time, uh, and so they all sort of took over. But then after the game. Pop said, well, assistant Tim Duncan was the head coach. Like he was taking over responsibilities to finish out the game. Before games start, do like head coaches have to like put like a little ranking? Like, well, if I get tossed, then this person is in charge. And then if that person gets tossed, the next person is in charge. Like that, that was always a little confusing to me because it was sort of like she was also coaching in that instance too. But, uh, you know, this one is official because he pointed at her as Becky said, which is really funny. <laughs> Look, yeah. All the quotes coming out of all this are, are phenomenal. Becky says it is substantial, actually. You know, it's obviously a step in in the right direction, a, a direction you're talking about, Tess, that's inevitably going to happen and should. DeRozan was like, I loved his quote. He's like, Becky played. She was damn good, by the way. Uh, and any player who knows the history of women's basketball knows what she meant to the sport. You don't think twice about it. She's one of us. When she speaks, we're all ears. LeBron was asked about it. She's been putting in the work. And anytime you put in the work, you, sh you should get rewarded with opportunities. Um, but yeah, it's this, this, where's this... It, this is great, but let's. She should have a head coaching job by now, and maybe she's waiting for in San Antonio task. Maybe she is waiting for Pop to eventually 
move on and and that will be her uh, opportunity there unless, unless another team comes calling but what do you think lily yeah i think uh because it doesn't actually count as a victory for her or a well, loss actually because they lost the game but it doesn't count on her record is what i'm trying to say there so uh so it's not official official yet no it's not it's not i mean it, it's great that she was given the task this time because tim duncan obviously is not there either anymore he didn't come back this season but so it's good that pop did actually say okay you are you, you're filling in for me here mm -hmm. but it's still until we see becky as a head coach getting a wins that registered to her uh, name you know this is more just sort of like well pop it only happened because pop lost his mind for no real reason there i mean he didn't he certainly didn't need to get two technicals on that call no. um, so it was more circumstance rather than like we're designating becky as the head coach tonight now if he did that prior to a game then that would be different, even though, again, the record would still count as pops because you can't just say, uh, you know, how it works in interim in the NBA. Those those wins and losses don't count to a coach. Eh? They go to the other coach. So, But it would be good if he said before a game one day, said, tonight she is the coach and I'm, I'm going to sit back and just watch her do everything. That would be different, even right. though, again, it still wouldn't count on her record unless pop actually... Weren't, weren't the Spurs doing that in the bubble, or am I mistaken? Wasn't pop, like, sort of allowing some of the assistant coaches to sort of take over the head coaching duties within those games. Am I remember, crazy? To be honest, I oh, don't really I, remember. To be that's honest. definitely how Tim Duncan got his first win last year, right? Was that Pop had a, a personal reasons game that he missed. And he said, Tim, you're taking over for this. Right. It's all about that point with Popovich. When he says, you got him, you got to take over. But yeah, you know, it was only a matter of time, honestly, before Becky Hammond gets a job. So many Spurs assist assistants have gotten jobs throughout the league. There's not a great track record of success among Spurs assistants, but they all get jobs, which mm. I think is huge. And now that we've seen Becky Hammond officially coach an NBA game, direct it, whatever you want to call it. Tim <laughs> Duncan was the acting head coach. The headlines are still out there. But now that we've seen it in the NBA, like Becky was saying, it is momentous, even though I was trying not to think about it and just try to win the game. Now that yeah. we've seen it in a regular season game, maybe that makes it easier for a team to say, yeah, we're, we're going to be the team that hires Becky Hammond. Somebody should. And it'll be a huge story once it finally happens. Yep, for sure. All right, next headline. Within that same game, LeBron extends a record streak of 10-point games to 1,000. Yeah, LeBron celebrated his 36th birthday by becoming the first player in NBA history to have 1,000 straight games with at least 10 points. Lee, this is a weird one. Is this news? 10 points. Lee, you could put up 10 points in his NBA game. <laughs> it is news. I mean, it's a, it's yeah. a credit to LeBron's uh, longevity and his health and the, the fact that he kept his body ready for the last 13 years. I'm sort of surprised when you go back through his uh, record that uh, it wasn't even a little bit longer and he hadn't broken this record a little bit earlier because, uh, I mean, he when he came into the league, he's averaged 20 points in his rookie season. I mean, he seemed to be able to score. Last season was the only season ever in his career that he hasn't led his team in scoring. Uh, Anthony Davis led the Lakers, so which is incredible. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, this really is one of those things where you tip your hat to LeBron and just say, it's incredible that you've been able to stay healthy this entire time uh, because, you know, that's really what, what often happens is a player later in his career simply gets injured or misses games uh, or gets injured during a game, which happened to Kevin Durant. That broke his streak. He got mm -hmm. injured during a game and couldn't do it. So uh, that that's great for LeBron. Um, you know, and it's another record that Michael Jordan doesn't have. It's one that LeBron has, and it's one that's probably unlikely to be beaten, certainly anytime soon. I don't know who really would be able to do it, but uh, that's, in, that's you know, that's incredible for LeBron. Now, I don't know if you guys saw it or not. Now, also, I will say, uh, the NBA had an article up about it, and they did note that in two playoff games, yeah, yeah. He, he did have two single-digit games. So this is only a regular season. <laughs> yes, I'm glad thing. you brought okay. that up. Yeah. 2011 and 2014 with yes. the Heat. Yeah, he, he yes, did yes. have single uh, point games in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. so uh, you know, I mean, do you count those? I don't. Know. Yeah, so it's the same game. I don't know who cares. <laughs> but anyway, it's a game. You can get the game. You can make stats do whatever, say whatever you want, really, when you uh, fudge them the right <laughs> way. But anyway, I'm just wondering if you guys do know. You might have seen it, so you might get this quiz pretty quickly. But the the, the sort of top five guys for most consecutive ten point games in NBA history. Can you name them in history or current players? In history. Okay. In history, yeah. Well, MJ's second, isn't he? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is according to the NBA.com article. So Jordan was second with 866 consecutive games. Kareem. Carl Malone up there. Kareem oh. and Carl Malone. And then number five. Is it tough? Like much more no, difficult? I, I meant, Kobe? I meant, I meant Timmy him. Duncan. No, oh. I mentioned him already. You mentioned him already. Yeah, I said his name. Oh, Kevin Durant. Yeah, Kevin Durant. Yeah. He got injured. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he had a streak of 562, but he got injured in the first minute of a game a few years ago there with the uh, with the Warriors, which ended his streak. So that, that, again, was sort of the point I was making with LeBron. 
the fact that he never, you know, in, in some game twisted an ankle early oh, on, know. you know, or just even had a tweak. Well, he does hand. twist an ankle early yeah. on, and then it looks like he's going to be out for 10 weeks the way he's selling it, and then he's yeah. like, places his shoe up tighter, and then he's good to go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, I saw uh, your tweet last night, Skates, about LeBron yeah. actually never leaves the game, but every time it happens, people are like, oh, man, LeBron's down. I don't know. This might be the one. Yeah. It's never the one. It's yeah, never he's coming I, back. I, I did ask that. I was like, I know it's happened, but I can't recall a game where LeBron got injured in the game and then didn't return that game to play. You know, outside of, let's say, a blowout or something like that. People did point out, well, Christmas 2018, he hurt his groin. Mm-hmm. And he did leave that game um, and didn't return. And then he missed a couple games after that. But he had obviously hit his 10 points by then. Didn't happen early enough in the game. Uh, that it is, it is a pretty astonishing thing that the last time he failed to score 10 points in a regular season game it was January 5th, 2007. <laughs> uh, Tass, I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, most of his single digit scoring games are when he was a rookie, if you really look at it and you don't count those playoff games. It's pretty wild. Do you think it's newsworthy though? Sure. It's, uh, it's, it's a heck of a streak, although all it does is make people remember the series against the Dallas Mavericks when he had that eight point game in the 2011 finals. Right. That's what it reminds me of. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice NBA.com article. That's exactly where it fits. Right. I mean, right. it's, it's, it, it gets aggregated. It's like an automatic article. It's probably something like a, a Daryl Morey automatic tweet. It's just something that like <laughs> automatically generates when he hits a thousand straight games. It's, it's that's good. It's very good. It's very good. It is crazy that he's thirty six freaking years old. I, I, I can't decide if he, if that's too old or too young. It, it's just like he's been around forever. Yeah, that's uh, a weird one. But uh, yeah, but at the same time, it's like. <laughs> You know, he's got like a, you know, he's still in his prime at 36 years old. He, he is trying to change the game in terms of when an NBA player's prime is. That makes sense. But it's also like he's 40 and he's really old. I don't know. I can't tell. <laughs> yeah, it's very weird. I was telling uh, the girls yesterday, it's LeBron's birthday. You know, all the greatest things have come from 1984. Your dad included. The only thing that sucks from 84, Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman. 84, <laughs> apparently. But it blew Isla's mind that I would be older than LeBron, but it also blows my mind that LeBron is the fifth oldest player in the league. Like that doesn't seem like it makes any sort of sense, right? Uh, That he's still out there able to dominate at his age the way he is, still be the best player in the league. What I want to know is where's the assist streak, man? If you're not a good passer, where's your assist streak? (laughs) Or are you really a scorer at heart? Is that (laughs) truly your best skill? He might be overrated as a passer now that I think about it. Is there an assist streak, though? (laughs) That's a great question. Somebody's got one out there somewhere. I think um, think Magic Johnson has the double-digit assist streak, but, uh, I mean, LeBron won't get anywhere near that. (laughs) Although, you know what? Maybe, well, because there's probably not that many, you know? like uh, uh, It's got to be Magic. How many games do you think Magic did it, Lee, in a row? In a row, I mean, probably like only fifty or something like oh, that. Oh, I would say more. No, I, don't, I mean, that's, eh. that's tough. That's tough. I don't know. That's tough. I don't know. You, you can look it up if you want. There, Let's Lee, see if Lee, I can but, find uh, it. Yeah. Okay, just newsworthy enough. We say with the LeBron one. Maybe. Uh, oh, here we go. Here I we go. Think, I've got yeah, something I think already. That it was on his birthday. I think that helps the headline. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, go ahead, there, Lee. What uh, do you got? I believe it's John Stockton with thirty-seven games in a row. Oh, that's I it. Believe. Wow. Yeah, I believe. <laughs> All right, so, LeBron should yeah. set his eyes on this record. Eh? You've got to be 37 That's... next year. What a perfect time to yeah. play. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, all right, next one here. Got a photo to show you with this headline. Masked Kawhi Leonard dominates in return, leads Clippers to the blowout win over the Blazers. There it is for everyone joining us on YouTube or watching on YouTube. Kawhi is a fascinating mask. Uh, this is awesome. He's obviously playing in this because he had the stitches in his mouth and his jaw was hurting. Trey, is this news? The masked man. Kawhi Leonard. Oh, man, Skeets. This is huge news. We should all feel blessed to have seen an all-timer NBA mask happen in real time, right? Like, these right. things only come about yeah. every once in a while. Like, the, the last notable masks we've seen are maybe, like, LeBron's carbon fiber mask. Mm-hmm. Maybe that time Manu Ginobili had to wear a pad across his nose. <laughs> one. I just kind of taped it to his face, but... This was incredible. I don't think I've ever seen a nose out mask, period, right? Like when you're buying a Halloween mask, a nose is kind of like the first thing you cover. I don't, I don't know why, but this was just killing me. It only works for Kawhi as well, because it's like if there's one player in the league who doesn't need to move his lips very much, that's Kawhi. He might just go to this mask from now on, even when he smiles. You remember that clip from when he was with the Raptors and he did that tiny, tiny, tiny little smile? Wouldn't even show his teeth. 
This is perfect for Kawhi. Doesn't have to say a word. Doesn't have to smile. He just has to go out there and get buckets. Like Ziggy Starfox says, Hannibal Leonard. What a <laughs> yes, or uh, Claw Reese I also saw going around. <laughs> but Hannibal Leonard is good. Um, yeah, it's a unique mask, Tass, because we are – you know, we do usually see the covering of the nose, right, or, or around the eyes. That's where the injury occurred. But with Leonard's case, they're like, no, we got to we gotta take care of that, the lips and the jaws. And so we get this crazy sort of hockey-like um, <laughs> mask here. What do you think of this one? Uh, it, just, it sucks me in. I just can't stop looking at him with the, <laughs> the hole in his face. Um, I think it's ingenious, really. I think the biggest thing that NBA players have a problem with when they wear masks is – their nose and just breathing and you always see them adjusting their mask like oh this is bugging me at some point they toss it to the side this one i think it's perfect uh, <laughs> i think yeah you you can take a nice elbow to the nose right there you don't want to be playing carl malone in this mask but i think you'd be comfortable breathing in it and either way Mouth, if, if he's a mouth breather or a nose breather, I think he's good. <laughs> he's good. Uh, what do you think, Lily? Uh, it, it looks like, though, we're going backwards with mask technology. Because <laughs> yeah. Remember Kyrie and uh, LeBron had the cool black mask. They looked yeah. awesome. Yeah. This one looks like someone's just like got big like masking tape and just gone like just just stick that plastic thing over his face. That will do. It oh yeah, well like CJ Zero, I think tweeted. Like he basically is like Kawhi made this himself. Like, yeah, it it looks like it. yeah, it looks like he sort of hacked away at that middle part that usually does cover the nose. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's weird. It just I, I like when you think of Kawhi Leonard and someone said, "Here, you're wearing this tonight." You could just imagine his reaction. Like, what? What is that? Give me one of the cool masks. Really? I think I he would say his mask. Like, okay. okay, yeah. Uh, just slap yeah, it on. I don't know. It just it it just it that looks like it has been slapped on. Literally, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it must cool. be uncomfortable. You're right. right. It does look like a throwback. This looks like a mask <laughs> you would see in the 70s when they're like just figuring out mask technology. Yeah. In the second half, uh, like the straps were all twisted on it. It really looked like he's just like, whatever. I haven't yeah. talked to anybody anymore. Don't hit me in the face. He I said uh, his teammates were jokingly calling him Leatherface. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> the mask. Uh, it worked, by the way. He had 16 points in the third quarter. Um, you know, he was, a, he was a bit of a terror in that quarter as they ran away from the Blazers. They got the victory. They, they helped keep uh, Damian Lillard in check. He only went for uh, 20 points on 3 of 14 shooting. So they got the victory. It's got the mask. has got to stay. It's got to be like a Rip Hamilton thing here now. Yeah. I like it, too. It's like because we always joke that he's like robotic and stuff like that. It sort of like takes that to the next level. Um, I'm all in on Hannibal Leonard. If they let him make that mask chrome, then he would oh, look like an android. Like, awesome. let him loose. Let him off the hook here. Make it like the NHL, where if you're a goalie, if you have to wear a mask in a sport, you should be able to do whatever you want with it. Yeah. And uh, you brought up the black, uh, like carbon masks. Lee, I didn't the, le the league say, like, you got to stop wearing those, I think. Because yeah, Kobe I, had it once upon a time, like yeah. the cool Batman vibe. And they were yeah. like, no, the mask has to be clear, I think, is their ruling. Yeah, I think so, because I think as well Kyrie had an awesome night in Madison Square yeah. Garden where yeah. it was like, that's cool, man. That looks cool. And that will encourage people to wear them if they're going to be a little bit safer. <laughs> right. You know? So, I'm yeah, bring it. it back. Bring it back, man. I mean, it just – yeah, that, that one looks like that Calvin Murphy one. Remember the big sort of helmet thing that that, that he wore back in the day? So, yeah. Yeah, I, and uh, I just think – I mean, what what's, what's the harm with having the black mask? I mean – like, why would they ban that, I wonder? It looks, yeah, you're right. I'm with you. It looks so cool. Speaking yeah. of masks, dude, do you think there's like a, not, I don't know, not a ban, but like a mask dress code for the coaches? Like the 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 masks, the masks are very simple. And I was like, I was thinking about it. Like sometimes they'll have a little team logo on it. I, like some of them, but not even a lot of them do. It's like, are, have they been told like, you can't go crazy with your mask? You can't have like the Whittler on your mask and stuff like that? Like, <laughs> well, I think, uh, I like, think yeah. Popovich just had like the sort of surgeon mask. Oh, on I know. Some of them, yeah. yeah. Know. But Steve Nash definitely had the, the Brooklyn Nets one on yeah. there. So, yeah. And, and uh, Rick Carlisle had, I think, uh, was his like an NBA one? I think he had something. Maybe, like that. but like, why doesn't like Tibbs have like a personalized one that says ice on it? You know, or, like, yeah, or a big yeah. smile, a big yeah, right. smile. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's like, I'm surprised they haven't got creative, but maybe they're not allowed to. Who knows? Yeah. Um, all right. So we're all up on the mask. I'm sure most of you guys are as well. Final uh, headline here Kyrie Irving gets hot in the fourth as the Nets outscore the Hawks. 145, 141. Not an overtime game, Lee. That was the final score in regulation. Uh, is this news? 
Uh, this is news. Yeah, this was a good game. This was the game of the night, actually. Yeah, it really lived up to the hype, which was great because the Atlanta Hawks have been going in unbeaten and they were going up against the best defensive team in the NBA last night and put 141 points on them pretty easily, too. I, I thought uh, I thought they did a great job. What they really, what stood out to me, though, was just at the end of the game, the Hawks are, are just missing that uh, ability to close out games. I think that's what it was. Kyrie Irving struggled early on and then just got cooking in that fourth quarter, the 17 gorgeous points because every time he gets hot he's so much fun to watch because he's just uh, in his zone Kevin Durant had the quietest 33 points I've ever seen last night he just I looked at the box score I thought I can't believe he finished with 33 because yeah. everyone scored everyone seemed to go out there and get some buckets there last night but uh what I really sort of stood out to me last night was Trey Young here in his third season He's got little bits of Kyrie Irving in his game. He shook mm -hmm. him a couple of times and, and went inside and scored the layup. He's got that uh, variety to his game. But he's also got some James Harden-esque qualities of getting free throws. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that is something that's interesting because I think Trey Young to this point has flown under a lot of radars because the Hawks haven't been good. He's been good. He's made an all-star team. But seeing him last night when his team needed some buckets and he would do that sort of back into his defender. Oh, that's the Chris Paul right there. Well, yeah, Chris yeah. Paul, Jack, yeah, the embellishment yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, there. The, the stop. Like, go around a guy and then just stop and then the yeah. guy runs into you in the back. Yeah, yeah. It, it'll be interesting to see if uh, how the narrative changes there on, on uh, Trey Young because uh, right. he, he, he's absolutely fishing for fouls and he gets them. And, you know, he's at that stage where it's like he's not a big enough name just yet that everyone's talking about him. But if the Hawks do continue to keep winning and he keeps playing and putting up, you know, 30s and 10s, uh, he's going to draw more attention. So I'm mm. interested to see what the uh, if people change on it. Because right now, I think people love seeing the highlights of Trey Young, the deep threes, and he goes inside. He's got some nice finishes, again, like Kyrie Irving. Uh, but will he start annoying people? That's uh, that's interesting. But <laughs> great game, really good game, and really good to see the Hawks um, in their early season promise in a big stage, really uh, put it up there against the Nets. And uh, I like Steve Nash after the game because he was asked, you know, he said, we came into this game with the best defense. That went out the window. Uh, and it was, a, it, was a, it was a back and forth game. You know, the, the Nets closed it out and Steve Nash just said, yeah, I think I need a beer after yeah. the game. Yeah, I definitely need a beer, <laughs> Steve Nash said. <laughs> a lot of offense. Uh, yeah. Taz, did the Hawks prove anything to you that they can sort of hang with uh, some of the better teams in the – in the East, at least in the Nets, because they had beaten up on some sort of crappy teams. But, you know, they were in this game. Yeah, the Hawks have grown since last year, and Trey Young has grown since last year. I, I think it's easy to forget uh, because Trey Young had such a phenomenal offensive year and that he went to the All-Star game that the Hawks stunk on that end of the floor. They just kind of were waiting for Trey Young to do something on every possession. They had mm -hmm. the 26th ranked offense uh, last year. And I think what Lloyd Pierce has done with that team early this season, already, how everybody is buying in. And by that, I mean vets on the bench. Their, their big signing, the, the big deal that they, they somehow pried Bogdan Bogdanovich away from the Sacramento Kings' fingers uh, was, was a big story. He's been on the bench, and, 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 and Lloyd Pierce has decided – uh, you're you're going to come off the bench as our scorer, but we need a balanced lineup, very Spurs-esque. We might not start our best five guys, but we're going to start Cam Reddish and DeAndre Hunter on the wings uh, because we want a nice balance with our defense uh, in, in the starting lineup, and then the offense can come off the bench. And then Clint Capella, you're sort of our, like, JaVale McGee superpower, you know, our, our, our glorified JaVale McGee playing only 20 minutes a game, even though, you know, you were a big acquisition mm -hmm. last year. And, and John Collins, you're not going to get the ball when Clint Capella is uh, roaming in the in the lane. You're kind of going to be a, a tertiary guy. But then when he's off the floor, you're going to be our backup center. And then you got Gallinari coming off the bench. Uh, so there's there's a, a perfect balance. Uh, I, I was, I'm shocked with how they know what they're doing on every possession. Unlike last year, it was just watch Trey Young go. Just just give him the ball. And, and there was a great possession at the end of the game that that showed last year on a broken play, they would just get the ball to Trey and watch him do something. But it was a broken play. DeAndre Hunter had the ball up top, and it looked like Trey Young was going to come get the ball. But as soon as two guys went to Trey Young, he turned and went to the basket and had a little drop-off pass that was a foul because he's improved, because they all have their roles. And again, John Collins... Uh, led the team in shots last night, but he didn't force it at the beginning when, when Clint Capella was on the floor. He took his spot. He, he picked his spots and, and scored 30 last night. Uh, I, I think everybody's just really fallen into their role. Um, to, ha to watch an 80-point quarter in the fourth quarter is why Steve Nash needed that beer when yeah. it was 43-37 uh, for the Nets. They got to do it again on Friday in Brooklyn. 
you know, one weird thing of this uh, current schedule is that you got to do it back to back games in the same city. Uh, so they're going to be playing again, um, which, which is kind of strange. This is a little baseball esque, um, but uh, yeah, I'm buying the Hawks as a playoff team. If, if they're buying in already to knowing their roles uh, and doing this, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with all these vets just kind of filling in and, you know, Rajon Rondo, wants to get to the playoffs because he gets a 750,000 bonus if they get there. So I think they're all all pushing in the same direction, which is great for a young team. It's yeah. it's shocking. Yeah, those three wins, not great teams. Um, but, yeah, they held their own with the Brooklyn Nets. And, yeah, it's the, the Nets probably win this game by 20 if Kevin Durant has a good game and he shot 50% and had 33 points, and that sounds nuts. But, but uh, he was just miss He was clanking. So their D ha- the Hawks D has to get better, but oh yeah, it does. <laughs> they're, they're, they're working. Too. Why? Why? That game was awesome, and they <laughs> yeah, all agreed fun. we're not playing any defense. It was the second hottest thing I saw all night after episode five of Bridgerton. <laughs> a steamy one, my <laughs> friends. Uh, also, right, uh, Vince Carter is incredible on the call. He could be yeah. the Tony Romo of the NBA. I would say you had to be listening to this on the Hawks broadcast, obviously, but his uh, how close he is to his playing career. Right, he was playing last season so he still obviously has relationships with these guys and it's just cool to hear his insight uh being so recently in the nba there was that take that john collins had late let uh that late lefty in the in the lane he finishes with the tough left hand and vince carter just says oh, that makes me feel good i yeah. taught john collins that move it makes me feel good that he's going <laughs> to the left hand trusting the left hand uh, I just thought he was great on the call, and this was just uh, such a fun game to watch. When two teams that are actually good come in and say, we're not playing any defense, we're going to see who can score the most, that is my ideal kind of basketball game. It's different when it's like the Bulls versus the Wizards. Nobody's playing defense because nobody can play defense. When it's more of a choice, it's fun to watch, and those two teams are just bombing away. Bogdanovich was great hitting shots with zero space. Kyrie and Kevin Durant there in the fourth quarter. You're like basically guaranteed to get 30 points from those guys in the fourth quarter. That's going to be tough to beat come playoff time. Yeah, you knew the chances of the Hawks winning this game were not great when like Kyrie was like, I don't know what he was at that point, like three of 15, like heading into the fourth and they were like in the game and you're like, uh, at some point he's going to find his groove here and these are going to start dropping. Yeah, he just absolutely took over. It sucked for the Hawks too. Um, Gallinari made his uh, – was that his debut, actually? Uh, yeah. No, no, it no, wasn't. It, yeah, wasn't. he played but in the first game, but he, he sat the, the next game. Game. He missed a couple games. He's back, but then he gets injured again. I mean, and rolls the ankle. Um, and he, You could see he was visibly frustrated. He didn't return to this one. So that sucked. That was a bit of a bummer. Uh, I felt bad for him. Um, and I will say this, too. You're right, Trey. It was fun. There's no defense. But fourth quarter, when Kyrie starts cooking, it would have been a nice opportunity if he was available for Lloyd Pierce to be like, hey, Chris Nunn, um, have a go at trying to slow him down. That's what you're known for. You're not known for much else, but you are a great defensive uh, player, especially on the perimeter. Slow him down, man. Uh, make make life a little more difficult. Now he's not playing yet for the Hawks. That's how deep the Hawks are. We're talking about guys that weren't even playing, um, but uh, they could have well, used. Well, that's what KD said after the game too, right? He's like, there's seven or eight starters on that team yeah. when I look at them. And they definitely are. And like Tass is saying, you know, we're a week and a half into the season. They are all bought in right now. We'll see how it turns out throughout yeah. the season. Yeah. If, it, you know, some some guys start playing well and some don't yeah. and blah, blah, blah. Get me some time here and there. But they're all on the same page right now and it's working. Yeah, it definitely helps when when there's W's there. Uh, even if you only play 20 minutes, let's say if you're Capella, but you get the W. I know not last night, but up until that point. Um, that helps, but absolutely great point. What happens when the losses start coming and then you're like, hey, I could have helped us win that game. Why am I only getting X amount of minutes? That'll be the real uh, coaching challenge from Lloyd Pierce. But so far, he's knocked it out of the park, I have to yeah. say. And yeah, and that and that was a bit of a moral victory, honestly. It was for Hawks because they're right there against one of the better teams in, in the uh, Eastern Conference, maybe in the league. And they were they were hanging. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> I don't know if they did have like a gentleman handshake before saying we're not playing. <laughs> they, they were right there. And that was, go watch the highlights. A lot of fun, uh, that game. And watch the Hawks broadcast. I can't. I can't agree more. Vince Carter, absolutely phenomenal. A, a great debutant uh, on on the broadcast. Uh, like 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 he's in on Bridgerton. Uh, Got to go watch Bridgerton. But like, Dominique yeah. Wilkins has been there forever as the color commentator. And then you get a younger guy like Vince Carter. It pushes you a little bit. I think. I think it pushed. Hundred percent agree with that. Yep. To pick up his game a little bit. And, and they were they were sparring back and forth. They, they they were great. I think they're really good. And Bob Rathbun was also great. Uh, Vince Carter, you know, was basically like every 
every guy on every team was one of, is one of his former teammates. So <laughs> Jeff Green is on the Nets. He goes, oh, yeah, my former teammate. And Bob Rath, <laughs> hey, Vince, we don't have time for that. I mean, yeah. we'd be here all night if you talk about every one of your teammates. But, yeah, him and, him and Neek were, were going back and forth. The only thing about Vince, like when John Collins had that nice – uh, beautiful Euro step at the end, going left, fantastic stuff. And he said, yeah, that makes me so happy. And then he started talking about it for like three possessions. We got to get to the next, got to get to the next play. Come on, come and on, it's man. quick, let's go. We've just, we've just spent the last few years talking about how old Vince is. And now Tess is saying how it's great to have a young, young voice on the broadcast, yeah. <laughs> which is great. But I, I actually was watching the Nets broadcast, which is always great with Iron Eagle and oh, Sarah yeah, Pusto, yeah. especially where Jared Allen throws down a dunk and uh, Marv, uh, Marv, Iron Eagle says, uh, a throw down. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, they're, they're one of the best deals. Oh, yeah. And I uh, like, Bob and Neek, not my favorite duo in the league. So I, I was 100% on board adding that uh, that youthful Vince Carter to the broadcast. <laughs> it, it did help. It made for a more enjoyable watch. Um, I mean, you're right, Jess. It is pretty funny. That guy has played with like every single player in the he, NBA. They got to get him on some national games. I think they said he holds the record, right? Is it like yeah. 600 plus teammates he's had Vince Carter? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they said that, and I'm not sure if they were joking, but it's yeah. probably right. I mean, but he's, he's played had, on a ton of teams. He's, he's had the lot. He's at, literally he played the most years in yeah. the history of the NBA, and he played with a lot of teams. 261 teammates, according to oh, uh, Hoops Height. Oh, that's yeah. it. Well, yeah. that'd be, I guess it's a ton, but yeah, they were joking with the 600. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Is it a record, though, Lee? Apparently, yeah. He, uh, he holds the record. Oh, 236 okay. is next, and then 230. So uh, you want any quick trivia or not really? Shaq? Shaq yeah. in there? No, yes. no, no. Oh, Let's do right. the top five. I uh, I'll, 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 I'll tell you this, the top five. One of the players is still playing. One of them is sort of not officially retired, but he was playing in the bubble. Hmm. Huh. Sort of not retired, but playing. <laughs> well, he played bubble. in the bubble. He was down in the bubble. Haslam? But he didn't... No. no, no, but a Haslam-type guy. How's Kevin White on there? This guy, uh, this guy was a super high draft pick, uh, Chicago Bull from a early part of his Tyson career. Chandler. Tyson Chandler. Tyson Chandler's yeah. number nice. three. Yeah, yeah. Number two is uh, a guy who you probably associate with the Washington Bullets. I think he had the first $100 million contract. Juwan Howard. Howard. Nice. Howard. Yeah. Uh, number four is the guy who's still playing. And he's play he gets traded every year. Two Kyle or three. Corbin. Guys. No, no, no. He's still playing. He's Where is he right now? He's... Uh, Alpha. Detroit, I think. No, is he Detroit or Oklahoma? Luke no, no. <laughs> he got traded. Like, he got traded. I think three times in the in the summer in, in the off season. Here. Trevor James Arisa. Johnson, Trevor, Trevor Arisa. 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 Yeah. Wow. Yeah. and uh, he has uh, one more teammate than the guy at number five. Who uh, very uh, we had him in the starter studio, but never on the show. Very fashionable. Dude. Kevin, Kevin Willis. Willis. Kevin Willis. Yeah. Oh, you did say it. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Kevin Willis. Yeah. So, wow. Nice pole yeah. test. That's yeah. Good. All right, there we go. Um, and make sure uh, you gave credit, right? That was Hoops Hype? Hoops Hype. That's oh, what it came from. Yeah. Uh, so. Hoopshype.com. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's a dot com. Uh, all right. So that's a little is this news. Um, but maybe the biggest news of the night, Tass, we got our first wedgie, my man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. 2020 may have been a poop year, uh, <laughs> but at least we're ending it in style as Mark Followill, Derek Harper, and Jeff Skin Wade noted on the call. And see, oh, great pass. Powell inside. Oh, and it's a wedgie. There's also a foul, though. <laughs> you only get to say that a couple of times. It's, it's the first ever foul wedgie. <laughs> that might be the first ever foul wedgie. <laughs> you, you look forward to that wedgie. <laughs> like a little kid getting some candy or something. It's a wedgie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've never seen that before. I don't think I have either. The, the foul wedgie. First right. Thing, first so, time for everything. Right? So if there were no foul, then of course, as we know, that's a jump ball in center court. Yeah. But a foul means two free throws for Powell. <laughs> never seen anybody get so excited about a wedgie, man. I get excited about weird things. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> that's, that's a fun awesome. thing to get excited about, Fallowell. <laughs> Uh, uh, Mark Fowler really went for it. He said, that's the first ever foul wedgie. Well, Jeff Skin Wade pulling a, a real no dunks, really hedging by saying, I'm not sure if that's the first <laughs> ever foul wedgie. <laughs> that seems like the first. It got, I've never seen one of those either. I don't think that's the first foul wedgie. I, I'm not going to go back and check, but I'm pretty sure we've had a foul wedgie before. Yeah, yeah, yeah once, or, once or twice. It, it definitely has happened. That one was fairly unique. I mean, it's a hell of a foul. He gets all hand and then the wedges. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's rare. It's definitely rare. We don't have a lot of those. Yeah, but, yeah uh, I like it though because they showed like a hundred replays of the yeah. wedding. When yeah. it's a foul, you got a little bit of time to show stuff off before <laughs> they get to the. You know, if it's a regular one, they're getting to the jump ball pretty quickly. Let's get back to playing. Mm-hmm. But you're getting some subs during a foul. Yeah, take your time. You talk about letting it breathe. They did. Yeah, they did. They, I love. Uh, we got to make Harper when he's sort of mocking uh, Mark, going, "It's a wedgie." Well, that's gonna be a drop. <laughs> I love how he's uh, he's like joking around, but uh, good stuff. I'm glad it was the Mavs broadcast getting the first one oh. here to get us started. And I saw people asking, "Look, we got the shortened season tasks. You know, 72 game season. Our goal is usually 50, but." Have, are we changing the goal? Like, have we knocked it down? Are we going like 44, 45? Um, what do you think? It seemed like the predictions in the preseason were that we're going to get to 50. So. Well, yeah, they were, but maybe we should change that. <laughs> <laughs> After uh, a week here After with just start. one wedgie. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, we, should we I go think 40? We I mean, yeah, I guess 40. That's uh, that's a good chunk of games. 10. 10 yeah, Schumann, Schumann, I asked Schumann on Twitter. 150, 150 less games, right? So that's... 1080 games versus 1213 games. <laughs> <laughs> Schumann said yeah. Schumann had it at 44 45 because the playoffs are the same, you know, length. Mm-hmm. Um, that he thought that would be maybe, I think 45 is perfect if you ask me, but uh, sure. who cares? We'll get to 50 anyway. Uh, <laughs> nice to have our first one. And they come in bunches. Finally, usually, yeah. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully get one. Uh, I mean, we'll get one tonight to really end out uh, 2020 in style. We can only hope, but a great call from Mark. And by the way, Shout out to everybody that lets us know when they see a wedgie. You can't watch all games. I actually didn't watch any of the Mavericks Hornets games until I caught the highlights this morning. But when you let us know on Twitter uh, or Instagram, you try and tell us like when it happened in the game. Uh, because at first there was a bunch of like <laughs> wedgie, 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 like in Mavericks Hornets. But I'm like, okay, hold on. I didn't see it until like 10 minutes later. I wasn't on. And then I'm like, okay, now where is this? And I'm trying to find it. So if you can let us know when it happens in the game, that really helps. And the other thing is, Tass, people said, well, hold on. That wasn't a shot attempt because it was a foul. It, but it is because he went to the line. Right. Well, it's not a field goal. It's attempt. not a field goal attempt. Yeah, though. but it's but it's 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 in the play. <laughs> no, of, I agree. I yeah, mean, that yeah. that is definitely mm. recounting. Yeah. I tried to make it clear to some people, like, we don't count ones where like there's a whistle on the floor and then somebody chucks it up. Yeah. Like a second oh, or yeah. two later, and then it, you know, wedges. We don't count those. It's got to be sort of in play, which that one is. That's in yeah. play for sure. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's like uh, when coaches review a challenge, or review a play. It's like, is it part of the play? Then yeah, it, it's a wedgie, right? right. You know, right. we don't want to go all JD saying, "Hey, it's Wonder Woman 1984. The song came out in October. It's not chronologically <laughs> possible." Right, right. You know, we, we don't want to get all all crazy here. Yeah, if it's part of the play, it's part of the play. It counts. We got one. We got, uh, well, either 44 or 49 to go. It's, it's your call, really. Okay. Lee, let's get to Tweet of the Night. Mm, tweet of the Night. Wow. Twitter. Uh, a lot of pressure here, Lee. This is the uh, final Tweet of the Night of 2020. Yes, there is. it is a lot of pressure. But I think I've got a good one which really sums up what 2020 has been for everyone. And it comes from Australia's greatest basketballer, Lauren Jackson, okay. uh, out in Australia there. Yeah, so McDonald's Australia must have been operating a code, offering a code for a free coffee. And this is the one that she got here. And she says, thanks for the coupon code for my end of year free coffee. I thought it was appropriate to share considering the year was just here. <laughs> and I thought, uh, yep. That sums up for everybody, really. We, everyone wants to just get 2020 over number. They're already done with it in Australia. They've already moved on to 2021, and we're right. uh, a few hours behind. So, yeah, very happy that Lauren Jackson, she's uh, been nominated too for the Hall of Fame this year. Nice. And I think she will get in. She has got quite the resume. I'm just going to quickly run through it uh, here. Eight-time All-WNBA team on a seven-time first uh, All-NBA team there. Five-time All-Defense, three MVPs, two championships, Defensive Player of the Year, Finals MVP. Uh, and I got to meet Lauren when I was in Australia actually last year too. Uh, nice. And her mum and dad were both a bucket as well. They were both a walking bucket. <laughs> <laughs> are they going one on one? Yeah, just in the family there. Uh, so uh, great to see, great to see Lauren, and uh, looking forward to her making the uh, trip to Springfield and entering the Hall of Fame. I think that's a lock. Uh, and yeah, for those listening, the code was FKU2. Oh. <laughs> yes, sorry. Uh, that was the redeem code there. The Q code, like a bummer or something like that. Yeah, I'm perfect. just glad to see uh, a couple of things from that. First of all, Macca's is the McDonald's Australia <laughs> official account. Hilarious. Somehow Lee Ellis has 
completely <laughs> taken over their country. And number two, uh, shout out to McDonald's for also not really loving you too, because I say FKU too as well. <laughs> uh, overrated, man. You had your time in the sun 30 years ago. We're off that. Yeah, yeah Lee, there will be a beautiful day tomorrow. <laughs> Twenty twenty one. Sunday's is coming up. Uh, it'll be bloody. Uh, Lee, did you? You've seen you two, right? Yeah, I've, I've seen you two that. several times. Several uh, times. Several times. Yeah, yeah, across several continents. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now the thing is, you two's PR really took a hit when they uh, laid at their album in what twenty? When was that? Twenty eleven or so? When it was just automatically on your phone? Yes. That on your, really on, your is- on your uh, yeah, I guess it was your. Was it your uh, iPod? <laughs> was it was it definitely it? on iPod. Yeah. Yeah. Was it iPod? Yeah. I don't know. I, don't know. Yeah. I thought it was on the iPhone. Anyway, yeah, they, they took a they took a PR hit there for that. But uh, <laughs> well, because people like we hey, listen. If I want your music, I'll download it. But I will say, um, one of the greatest shows in in uh, person to see. Like Bono puts on an incredible show. Uh, well worth going to see him right. if you can. You know, how's how's Ed? No, edge. edge. Oh, the edge. edge. Yeah, uh, yeah. Great, great. Larry, it's great. Adam Clayton, great. They're all great. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, in fact, in fact, if you want to hear my five favorite U2 songs, go to the Sirius, F, uh, Sirius FM, Sirius XM app right now. Go to the U2 channel. See a little uh, top five of Lee Ellis in there. What are you talking about? <laughs> they, uh, they've got their own channel on Sirius XM. Yeah, but how do you have the top five then? Well, because they said, hey, listen, if you're a fan of, of U2 and you want to be on Sirius XM, send us an email. So I did. And then I recorded my... Uh, what? Then, Are like, you serious right now? Yeah, check it out. Yeah, yeah. I'll, hey, I'll bring it up right now. Let me show you. Right <laughs> this <is great>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is exciting now. <laughs> you're starting uh, to make me like you too. <laughs> well, you should after you hear my top five songs. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's have a look here. Uh, so hold on. So... They just sent out this call like, hey, are you a U2 fan? You said, yep, I am, serious. And then you emailed in and said, these are my top five stars. So, I don't know. Let's see if you can see this up here. Or not. <laughs> totally. Let's read them for us, man. It's a podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah. Desire. Is that I their channel? Uh, so Why didn't you send me this before? I don't... Well, well I think he knew he was going to be talking about U2. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, yeah, let me just see if I can get the head start here for you. Just read the songs, man. Want to read the songs? No, I do like the idea of us trying to figure out the songs by yeah. you showing us a, a grainy picture oh, and then barely playing through the headphones. What, why why are you keep holding up your phone? These are all the fans who have done their top five songs, and I'm in there at like number. That's me right there. Right. <laughs> so number four. Yeah, but I mean, it's not. It's not like ranked like that. It's just, yeah, that's where you go. So who, like, are these celebrities or just random people? No, random. Just fans. Just fans <laughs> just telling me stories. And uh, yeah, so my. Well, I'll tell you my. I'll tell you my five that I put on here. I didn't want to just. Put, I didn't want to put the top five songs that anyone's heard. You know, like so. I went my five. I, I went with uh, Numb from the Zuropa album at number five. <laughs> Because it's the edge. It's the edge, the lyricist and the vocalist on that one. Great video, by the way. Really good video. Uh, what did I have at number four? I had number four. I had the fly from Aktung Baby. Just a, an incredible song. Bono even had the big fly glasses in that. Looked great. That was their. Um, that was a big album coming after Rattle and Hum because that came after uh, the Joshua Tree, which was their biggest album. <laughs> when you start doing things like this, turn into Rain Man. I don't know why. <laughs> I can see why they put you at number four. You got <laughs> and then I had uh, a song from the All That You Can't Leave Behind album. It's called uh, In a Little While. Now, the reason why that one is symbolic is because Bono wrote that for his wife, Ali, but also Roxana and I, when we first started dating, that was one that we used to slow dance to. We even had that at our wedding as our uh, as one of our uh, first sort of dance songs. It was a beautiful song. Is that why you've been slicking your hair back more? For that <laughs> <Yeah. Bono look? laughs> <laughs> you gotta do the next episode with giant. Yeah. Right. And, then, and then at number uh, four, I had Walk On, which was the actual one after the uh, this was the live studio album one um, after the 9 11. Remember, they did that big fundraiser, all these bands did a yeah. big fundraiser, and they did uh, Walk On, beautiful, beautiful version of it. So I put that one in there at number four, okay. and then at number one or number five, which yeah, oh my God. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, rank, you rank them five, four, three, two, one. Like, <laughs> Sir, can you rank them one, two, three, four? Uh, just take them, would you? 
and uh, and then um, oh, running to stand still from the Joshua Tree album was number one. Now the funny thing is, the running to stand still was the first U two song I remember hearing right off the Joshua Tree album. So yeah. I heard that and I thought, oh, that's a cool song. So imagine then what you thought of the band after you hear that, and then you hear the rest of the Joshua Tree album. You're like, oh my god, this is the greatest band of all time. Right. So uh, yeah, I think the Joshua Tree was the first album I ever actually bought with my own money. Um, oh. So yeah. where did you hear the song first on the radio? And uh, like my brother, my brother was playing it, I think, and I just I remember just thinking, oh, that's a good song. And then he said, yeah, well, listen, <laughs> listen to these other ones from this album, and I was like, oh wow, this is a great album. Some say the Joshua Tree is like the greatest <laughs> album of all time. Some say that. Some say your brother Nick is the greatest album. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, they they've had some bangers. I mean, Achtung Baby is an incredible album. All that you can't leave behind is an incredible album. How to uh, dismantle an atomic bomb, great album. Radler Hum's good. Boy is good. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's it's let back, him, I know. I think it's let him here an hour. I really do. What's that? I think if we just let you keep going, we would just hear an hour. <laughs> Every song that you two's ever recorded would be mentioned. Uh, yeah. Wow. All right. I'm going to have to go check this out now. This series. So is it just, is it a video of you counting it down? No, no, no. It's, oh, just it's, just it's just audio. It's just audio. In fact, let me tell you when it's going to be played today because I've got the. Uh, what are you it's talking be, about? It's be on, so it's on, it's on the. What do you uh, mean? It's going to be on so I could be on Sirius XM and hear, hi, I'm Lee Ellis. These are my top five U2 songs. Yes. That's a good thing you picked deep cuts, because you are going to be doing that. I'll give you more responsibilities. You're like, Roxy, hold on. i got to write my top five U2 songs. Well, it was tough to come up with just five. I could have gone 15 or 20 deep there on the U2. Yeah. Uh, uh, what time? 10, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Eastern tonight. It's going to be uh, uh hang on. What day? Today? I don't want to wait a ring uh, in the news. first. Yeah. See, she's got. She says here the Thursday, the first of the first, which is Friday. But she's 10 p.m. <laughs> Eastern. But it's anyway. It's it's you, you go to the the uh go to the YouTube channel, channel 32 on Sirius, and then go into the uh, YouTube Desire on X uh, you on, on X Radio, and you can you can listen to it anytime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds a little complicated. <laughs> yeah. What you're looking for? Shout out to Sarah. <laughs> Hang on, one sec, one sec. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> this, this We're still really doing a show. Lee. All right, all right, all right. Serious XM radio. Oh man. Okay. Well, I'm tuning in. I gotta go listen to this. How long is it? Oh, it's not very long. It's not very long. No, I do that. 45 uh, minutes. No, 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 no. no. They, they said to keep the intros like two minutes or less. Mine were pretty short, actually. There's an intro. Yeah, there's an intro. It says, uh, hi, I'm Lee from Atlanta, Georgia, by way of Melbourne, Australia. And these are the five songs I desire most on Sirius XM. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you pull out your sexy voice? Um, oh, yeah, I did. I did. I did put the sexiness into it. <laughs> didn't you? You saw you two in Atlanta just a couple of years ago, didn't you? Uh, no, I haven't seen them in Atlanta. I don't think. Or have I? Have I? Did I, I see you? Have I seen them? So I've seen them in Toronto. I in, remember um, Roxy talking about it when we were at JD's. I think it was. Uh, yeah. She went, to, uh, she went to New Orleans. She went to oh, New yeah, Orleans yeah, yeah. a couple of years With ago. With the gals. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. To see, yeah, uh, that was the Joshua was. Tree album, although they played tons of other songs off other albums as well. <laughs> which, which ones, Lee? Which album? <laughs> <laughs> let, me just pull up, let me just pull up the New Orleans. Uh, set list for you. Let's go yeah. to these. Now, that's a good song to start with. Oh, man, that is a... Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> I think I like these two now. I don't know how I how you did it, mate, but I like them. I'm in. Uh, yeah. This is the only channel I want to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the thing. I got right back into them when they got their own channel there on Sirius. Because, you know, I, I sort of drifted off as well. I haven't heard them for a while. And then they, uh, they're they on Sirius because, you know, I got hooked on Sirius. Yeah. Uh, and they said YouTube's got their own channel. A lot of other bands have had their own channel. Like Bon Jovi had one. Billy Joel had one. But I don't think they're uh, permanent. U2 is seem to be permanent. <laughs> So uh, I, might, I might try to squeeze another five in too. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, Big of results from last night. Uh, we were uh, we were all wrong, gentlemen. We all took the box. We thought they would go back to back in covering and victory over the Heat. It was looking good for there for a minute, but uh, the Heat 
you know, said, no, 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 not on our watch. And they got the victory. So they easily covered the six and a half line. So that's an L for everybody. We all had Milwaukee. Someone should have swerved for sure. Trey, you're two and four. Tass and Lee, you're three and three. I'm four and two. We're going to do this for the rest of uh, January or when we get into January. So it's not over yet. Trey has not lost. Um, and you know what? We won't even pick a game tonight because we're not going to be back till Monday. We're taking tomorrow off. Uh, of course, for January 1st, and then we got the weekend. We'll be back on Monday, and then we'll start making our picks again. We'll have all month of January to battle it out in our pick 'em contest there. All right, what a what a wild <laughs> year to, to uh, our 2020 podcast. Email us your questions and your comments to nodunksattheathletic.com for our Beach Stepping Podcast, where we answer all your cues next week. Uh, immaculate items available at nodunks.com. Go grab those. Check out the other great podcasts on the Athletic Network. Love me some Daily Ding. Love having that back in our life. So go check that out, that out as well as all the other great NBA podcasts. And that's it. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, as I said, we'll be back on Monday. Stay safe, Clipper bros. You heard it here first. Have a great time. Turn up. Love you guys. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And remember, FKU2 2020. <laughs> Embrace the New Year, people. <laughs>